All right, in this turn, I'm going to show you how to create morphs for basically any object that you want inside of Dad Studio. And I'm going to show you in a way, I'm going to show you a process that's going to allow you basically to use any mesh editing tool that you would like, whether it be Mudbox, Maya, Blender, all those tools should have the ability to do this process. I'll also show you things to look out for, issues that I ran into, and things you may encounter to try and save you some time and headache, and to remind myself of the issues I ran into in the future. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new document. So you're just going to go up here and go File, New, and uh, you'll get a new document here. So you can see my scene is empty, so we're going to start from scratch. I'm going to go into my content and I'm going to look for figures and I'm actually going to use uh, Eva 8. Now, uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm going to use Genesis 8. Now, I want to touch base on what, you, what you're using or what models you can and can't edit. Uh, I haven't found anything that I can't edit specifically, let's put it that way. But, what you need to know is if you basically build a morph on top of another morph, you should specify or keep track of what morphs you have already added to uh, to use the morph that you're going to use. Otherwise, it's not going to look right. So if you say use a morph, let's say you select EVA 8 here, and you create a morph, or EVA 8. If you then, in a new document, create a Genesis 8 female, not an EVA 8 female, I'm trying to apply that morph, it's going to work, but it's probably not going to look right. So, depending on what your, your goal is, uh, you're going to want to pay attention to what morphs you're applying initially, if any. Now, in my case, in this tutorial, I'm just going to apply it to the Genesis 8 female basic. But you could do the same process for any of your characters. You can do it for EVA 8. It's just, again, if you create a morph for EVA 8, you should let whoever know, or if you're sharing it, you should let people know that you are applying it to EVA 8 and that they should have the EVA 8 base model before using that morph. Otherwise, it's not going to correctly when they try and use it on the Genesis 8 basic female. This just has to do with moving the vertices and how the math is done with the vertices and all that. But anyways, that's something to keep in mind. Now, next thing you need to know, if you want to modify something like hair or let's say props, anatomy, materials, shaping, or, I'm sorry, any 3D mesh in here, you can modify any of the mesh. However, you don't want it to be attached or parented to another model. Let me show you what I mean by that. If I have the Genesis 8 female selected, and I go ahead and go to hair here and apply a hair, you're going to notice that when it imports, it's actually going to be under the Genesis 8 female hierarchy. And the way you can tell that, if you're not really sure, is if you click this little arrow next to the Genesis 8 female, if the hair name disappears, it's parented to your Genesis 8 female. And uh, the issue with that, and I haven't tested this, so it may be okay to build morphs directly from using the object, of, you, uh, doing this process with a, with a mesh that is attached to the female another model. But one thing I do know is that Daz morphs the models uh, when they are attached to another model. For instance, you use this hair from Genesis 8 or Genesis 3, and it will adjust the morphing of that hair accordingly. That may screw things up if you want to be able to apply this morph to more than one character for the hair and have it look the same. Um, I don't know, that's something you'll have to play with, but just keep that in mind. So, that being said, I think the best practice is, uh, I'm going to delete this here, is just make sure that no other object is selected, and 
And say you want to do the hair again. I'm just going to, whatever the hair was here. Make sure that nothing is selected so that that hair or, uh, with, you know, mud, I keep saying random, the things that are not right, uh, that prop or anatomy or accessory is not attached to anything else. So you can close these little arrows here and you still see that object. All right, so you want it to be the only object in the scene for uh, for best practices, basically. So we're going to delete the hair for now because I just want to go ahead and modify the genesis of the female. But I want to point out that you can do this for all kinds of other objects. It's not just the genesis eight. You don't have to use the genesis eight base. You can use whatever model you already have. Okay. Uh, that being said, let's go ahead and continue on the. The very next thing you need to do is you need to select your model, whatever it is, whether it is Genesis 8 or your hair, and you're going to need to go to parameters, and you're going to want to make sure that the topmost selection is selected. If you have one of these other ones selected, notice that it changes the options here. So it's going to, uh, you might not see this, the selection that we're looking for, so you want to make sure you have the topmost part selected here, make sure it's the base model, the main here that you want to select, not something like Genesis 8, female I don't know. All right. So we're going to select this. Next thing we're going to do is you need to change high res resolution level from high resolution to base. When I first started playing around with Daz, that really bugged me because I thought I was losing something by going to the base. Uh, now. I'm not an expert at 3D modeling, but from what I've read, my understanding is that the difference between the two is that the high resolution, <clears throat> to get from the base to the high resolution, Daz kind of fakes or kind of does special, like a special algorithm to generate kind of the in-between of the mesh. I don't know that that's the case for sure, Maybe they are actually just two separate meshes, one has a higher resolution. My understanding is that really the base mesh is always used, it's just that the high resolution uh, is something that Gaz does to add extra vertices. Uh, the other stipulation of this I've also read is that Gaz will only allow you to import the base resolution anyways. So even though you can export it as high resolution and it will add the vertices and things like from the export, I don't know if it just knows where the nodes are, like the nodes it generated in between and then creates the vertices for you to export it. Uh, but it will only allow you to import the base when you go to bring it back in. So you can keep it on high resolution and export it, but you don't have all kinds of problems when you bring it back in. So you want to make sure you have base selected. Now this is kind of newer for me, but uh, you also need to go to subdivision level and set this to zero. So these two options need to be set this way. Everything else should be left the same. Uh, again, unless you're specifically wanting to apply a morph that is always going to be applied when you use your, your morph that you're creating, uh, I recommend that you turn all your morphing off. Uh, we kind of covered that already, right? So, now that you have these two options set up, you've got base, and this set to zero, make sure that your figure is selected, then go to file, and you're going to want to go to export, down here, so select export. Now, you're going to want to use, uh, export it as an object, a wavefront object, so you can give it any name you want, I'm just going to call it uh, Genesis a female base model original. And this is going to be, if you plan on making multiple morphs for this object, it'd be good to call it original. Uh, I even tend to, once I create this base version, I put it in a zip file just so I don't accidentally overwrite this file. I can just unzip it uh, and have the base model again. So I don't have to do this whole process again. All right. It's a little tip there. So go ahead and save this. Now, uh, note these options. These are the options I use. I couldn't tell you exactly what every little thing does here, 
if I sat down and looked at it, I could probably figure it out. There's really no point. All you need to do is just make sure you have these same options selected. Uh, one thing that is very important that we will look at later uh, is you need to note the scale. Now, the scale is very important for two reasons. It does two things for you. A lot of the programs, when you go to import the object into those programs, the object will either be significantly large, average size, or way too small to use. So, uh, what I found with Mudbox is that if I use 100%, in order to use a tool, uh, I have to put the tool settings really, really low to be able to get my tool small enough to modify anything. Now, with Mudbox, if I put it to a thousand percent, uh, it allows me to use the normal values for the tools, so I don't have to try and really have to enter decimals and things in Mudbox. That's one of the advantages to setting the scale like this. So, it will change based on what app you use. If I understand correctly, Blender is the complete opposite. Uh, if I remember right, with Blender you want to set it to 1%. Because when you import stuff into Blender, it makes it huge and all the tools are really small. So this is going to be dependent on the program you're using. This is something that's going to take a little playing around with. But this is where you're going to want to do it here. Is if you import the model and you find that it's too big or too small to work with, go ahead and scale it here then you might even want to go down here and say um, or save the preset and name it accordingly so you know which program it's for or just a quick easy selection of oh i'm using mudbox click this one. Okay. although it's only changing the percentage so i'm going to go ahead and now before we move on also keep track of this number it'll help you a little bit in the future the second thing is, is uh, when we go to import it, the scaling factor is also going to be an, uh, an issue. Not an issue, but we're going to have to account for it. So I will show you how to do that too when uh, it comes back. All right, uh, and then we'll talk about that. So for now, I'm going to export it. It's really big, only because I'm using Mudbox, and it will be too small if I use 100%. So I'm going to hit accept. And it just saves it as a file. Okay, now at this point, you can open up that object file with any editor that you wish. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and use Mudbox. And I've already got Mudbox open here. So I'm just going to open this up. Now, <clears throat> I'm just going to go File, Open, and open up my model that I saved. Now, because I want to give you a visual of what that percentage thing does, um, let me go ahead and I'm going to do this process one more time on the Dev Studio here, uh, just because I want to show you what the effects of that percentage is. So I'm going to name this the same name of the smaller, or say 100%, or, you know, let's just do 10%. That's kind of a bottom number. And uh, we'll really exaggerate. So I'm going to change this to 10%. And that's all I'm changing. So now I'm going to go back into Maya here. Or, uh, sorry. I'm going to go back into uh, Mudbox, File, Open. And here's that 10%. So you saw the only difference between this guy and this guy here. This is a 1,000%. This is a 10%. Let me open it. You wish to save, uh, cancel. Actually, let me go see if I can import it. All right, so if I import it here, see 10%. Wow, see that little speck there? Let me see if I can zoom in on that. Um, these are peaks. Uh, one second, let me see if I can find it. That's that that one. Let me pause this and just uh, find how to do this. All right, I think the best, the only way I'm going to be able to do this, let me see. No, no, there we go. Do that. Make a 
zoom in here. Wow, you can, I mean, it's, it's not surprising, but you get the idea, right? So, look, I can't even get to it, it's so small. So, you can see the dramatic difference of what that percentage is actually doing. If I were to import it at that 10%, there's no way I'd be able to use the tools on it. Look how big the circle is. Um, let me just change this down a little bit so you can actually see it. I think I can get it small enough to actually, oh, there we go, okay. So look at that, even on like almost the smallest setting I have on my tools here, it is, uh, the circle is still huge, the whole head. So you can see what the issue would be if I were to import this uh, with a smaller percentage. Be aware of that. That's what you're doing with the percentage when you export it. So you're really putting in a percentage that's going to allow you to work efficiently with the tools and uh, allow you to make changes Bigger is not always better either. So again, I'm, getting, I'm just going to make a new one of these. So I made a new project here. And now I am just going to uh, open the original, not the 10%. So this is the one that was set to 1,000%. All right. So now that we've got our, our exported object in here and it's the right size for us to be able to work on it, um, I'm just going to make something quick. I'm not going to put time into this at all. I'm just... Maybe this lady has spikes. Maybe it's an insect. I don't know. That's weird. I know. It's, it's weird looking. Anyway, so that's going to be my morph. I'm just going to make this weird kind of spiky morph. Now, when you make morphs, it is absolutely imperative that you do not delete any of the geometry. You can't delete any of the vertices. You can't. Uh, you can't duplicate them. You can't. You can move them. That's all you can do. You can move the vertices all you want. You can move them, but you can't delete, cut, uh, replace. None of that. You have to leave the mesh the way it is. All you can do is shape it or morph it which is why I think that Mudbox is such a perfect tool for this. Um, coincidentally, if you're a student, you can get Mudbox free for like three years. So, and in fact, you can get Maya free for three years too. Go to their website, just throwing that out there. All right? So anyways, there you go. That's gonna be my morph. Now, again, can't subdivide, can't add, can't remove, any of these vertices, any geometry, all you can do is move what's already there. Uh, and, you know, you can you can hide it, whatever, but you can use your tool of choice. So this is going to be my modification. All I've done is move some vertices around. Now, all right, uh, let me take a step back for a second before continuing. Notice that over here, when we imported the object, we have something called a head and the left pectoral. And notice what it highlights. The head highlights these eyebrows here, and the left pectoral modifies the body. Now, in this case, we're just modifying the body itself. We're not modifying these eyelashes. And uh, we're going to run into an issue. I'm going to do this how most people would probably attempt this. I'm going to show you what the issue is first. And again, you're just looking for the objects in the list that has this kind of tan box here. Uh, not the all the ones with this, these little like rings or anything. All right? These are the actual meshes of the object. And you can see it highlights them too when you select them. Um, what I originally had thought, here's, let me show you what the issue was, is Remember I was just talking about how you don't want to have anything attached to the object? Well, when we exported this, when we exported this as an OBJ, as a wavefront object, the object 
saw both of these as kind of two separate, uh, again, as a separate object attached to the Genesis model. So when we exported this object here, notice that in Mudbox, we get two different meshes in here. This is a result of that mesh, of the two separate meshes. Now, you probably could play around in here and somehow parent the head to the left pectoral. If you really wanted to do it that way, uh, I'll leave that to you to play around with. However, because in this quick tutorial, all we're modifying is the actual body mesh. Uh, but in fact, let me show you what happens if you delete. This is what's going to happen if you delete a vertice if the mesh doesn't match exactly as the one you exported. This is a perfect example of what's going to happen. So I'm going to select the body here. And we go File, Export Selection. You want the selection there. Otherwise, it's going to export all the other stuff too. You don't want that. I've already uh, attempted this, but let's delete this and say, oh, we're, we're saving the modified mesh plugin. This is our morph. This is what we're saving it as an OBJ again, and this is what we're going to want to create a morph with. All right. So we just exported the body, not the actual head part that we also uh, that was also exported out of Daz. When we go to Daz here, and we select the Genesis Eight female. Uh, If we were so, I'm, I'm going to show you how you would import that that morph now, but it's going to give you an error, okay? And then we're going to go over what the error is and why you're coming across it, because it will probably happen a lot to you if you accidentally delete some of the geometry uh, as you're modifying or making a morph. So if uh, if you go to tools, what is it? No, it's edit figure morph loader pro now just so you know this comes free with dead studio 4.10 pro this is this is all free so you should have this all right you would open up morph loader pro with the geometry or the figure selected that you want to apply the morph to uh, select it over here you're going to need to click show individual settings all right and you're going to have to play with the scale. Now, I already know what the value should be. I'm going to set it to the correct value. I'll show you how you figure out this value. Because it's not always going to be apparent. But we'll go we'll go over that in a minute. Alright, so continuing on, I know that this value needs to be 10. Uh, what you would normally do is you would just come down here to choose warp files. After setting your percentage, all you do is come to choose more files. You would select the morph that you created in your other program and hit open. Now from here, you'll see that the mesh has been imported. Uh, normally you click on the name here and you could rename this. So spiky lady okay um, now if you were updating this mesh if this is the first time you're importing the mesh don't change any other settings perfectly fine with the way it is you would just click accept now however if you were you're editing a mesh and you realize you had made a mistake in your mesh and you really just wanted to update the mesh that's already there you could come over to here and give it the same name here that it's going to end up being in your program. And then you could select, instead of make unique, right click on it and say, um, uh, you know what, I take this back. I take this back. I don't remember, I, I 
remember reading somewhere that you would select one of these or something, it would overwrite it or it would update, overwrite existing. Yeah, I think it would, you would select deltas only and it would overwrite the original so that you would just update the more. The reason why you might want to update it is so you don't have to go back and like delete the old one and then add a new one. Like it's a pain in the butt. So you'd be able to just select deltas only here and it will overwrite the one that's already there. But uh, since this is the first one that we're going to do here, we're just going to name it like delete. Now, when I hit accept, oh, okay. Uh, it actually took it. So the reason why I thought we were going to get an issue is because when we have this selected here, um, it's smart enough to know that the mesh we imported is just the Genesis 8 female and not the eyelashes. So let me show you, so you let me show you what will happen if you mess up the mesh, if you delete a vertice or you include something you're not supposed to include. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this time not just the body, but the eyelashes too. You see that? So here the eyelash is selected and add the body. This is the equivalency of deleting the vertice or adding vertices or subdividing. Uh, if you then export this, export selection with a vertice that's not good. Now we come in here, bad mesh. Um, I know it's a weird name, it doesn't make sense, but you get the point. I'm just going to save it as a new one. If you made a mistake and deleted something, added something, have other, other geometry in there that's not supposed to be there, when you go into Dash Studio, and you do this same process where you select the object that you want to apply the morph to. You go to Edit, Figure, Morph Loader Pro. Uh, again, we're going to say Show All Settings. We're going to do 10%. We are going to then choose Morph Files. Again, we'll talk about that 10% in a minute. Now I'm going to intentionally select the bad morph. I'm going to give it a different name. Oh no, it's already got a different name in there. So I'm going to hit accept. You'll notice you get this message that warning geometry did not match. Failed to create the morph. This is the message you're going to get if you add something wrong or you delete a vertice. So what you'll want to do and uh, what I do just to make sure I have this process right before I invest a lot of time into the mesh itself, you should export it first. Just do a quick change like I just did. Just just something to show that you can effectively make a change to the mesh. Then export that out of the uh, program you're using and try to import it back into DAS and make sure you don't get this issue. If you do get this message, it means that the program you're importing it to is doing something weird to the, morph, or to the mesh. It's either adding vertices, it's adding... Uh, what it's called. It's, it's adding stuff to the mesh. It's modifying the mesh more than just moving the vertices. And that's where this issue is coming from. So if you run into this, be aware that's what's happening. So um, I don't know if we can permanently delete the vertices. So we know if we just select vectoral mesh, that it will work. Let me see if I can get in here. I'm just going to actually delete the vertices or face. Select nothing except for that one face. I need to delete. Oops. Makes a good one. You can delete it. Remove first and first section before the faces. Uh, okay, let me just fill it and delete something else. Oops. Okay, apparently, I'm still new to Mudbox, so I'm not sure why it's not letting me just delete something. 
which is actually kind of a good thing, I guess. Uh, but I know in like a lot of other programs, you'd be able to delete it. So in fact, let me just run up Blender real quick. Ah, uh, take that back. I apologize. I, I don't know why Mudbox isn't allowing me to just, it's, it has something that it's, it's being really smart is what it is. It knows that it sh that mesh shouldn't be deleted, mainly because it's made for sculpting and stuff. So it's protecting me from deleting on that stuff on accident. Uh, but something like, like Blender would just allow you, I think, to just delete that, that vertices. I think I'd have to come over here and remove these links. I think it has something to do with this linking over here. Let's see if I can figure it out real quick. All right, so I actually couldn't figure out how to delete the geometry, but I think you get the idea that if you destroy, create, or delete the geometry, uh, any modifications other than just moving the geometry around, then you are going to prevent the morph from being imported into DAS. In addition, just something to point out is if you're just starting, if you really stretch out these uh, this geometry like like I've done here, you're going to see it's going to affect the actual texturing too. It should become stretched. Uh, DAS is pretty good about this stuff. We'll see what happens. Uh, so let's go ahead and go back to DAS. So. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And we're going to go through this just one more time. So I've selected my model. I'm going to go over here to Edit, Figure, Morph Loader Pro. Okay. Now, how do you know? What, what happens if you get the wrong value here? Let's say we were to leave this as 100. And we were to import, in fact, yeah, let's say if we were to leave this as 100 and we were to do everything that we did to use the correct morph, the good morph, but we left this at 100, what's going to end up happening? It will still let us import it. It's not going to do anything there. But when we go to actually use this morph, so the morph, once it's imported, can be found in the currently used, uh, you select parameters, select the object, select parameters. You'll see at the bottom here, you'll now have morphs that you can click on. And you'll see this will be the name that you've given it. Now there are ways to like colorize this, do images and stuff. Hit the right click on it, go to edit mode. And that allows you to do all this extra stuff to make the slider look fancy. But this is how it comes in basically without playing with it. So if I turn off edit mode, if I use a slider, notice that my character is getting small and big. You're like, what the heck, man? What the hell's good to that? All right. The reason of this is because the scale was wrong. You can see it's still doing the more, but the scale was completely wrong when you imported it. Now you could sit there and play around with it and try and figure out what the number is, and it wouldn't be too hard, but uh, there's an easier way to do it instead of trying to import it as a morph to figure out what percentage you need to use, because it'd be kind of hard to figure out, uh, trying to figure it out through the morph process. So a better way to do this is go ahead and reset we're going to reset this more so it's not applied. I'm going to go to edit mode and I'm going to delete this more. Delete selected property. So that's how you can get rid of morphs. Then I'm going to go over to here. <clears throat> now, if I'm trying to figure out if my morph is importing correctly in its size, you can do this. You can come over to here, go to file, import. And you could select your morph. It's just an object file. So it's just like any other object. You can just import it into DAS. So what's going to happen, and you'll see in a minute why this is a little bit easier to figure out if you've got the right percentage. When you come to import it here, you're going to have the same percentage. You don't have to worry about any of these other selections. You're going to have the same percentage here that you're going to have to play with. So if I import it as 100, 
I just saved it, left it as 100, and I hit accept. I see him heal. <laughs> That's about it. Look how huge it is compared to the actual model. This is why the morph is acting so goofy. Because it thinks that your morph increased the size of your character in addition to adding the spikes. So as you're sliding it, that's what's getting this, this up and down motion, this shrinking and growing motion, uh, is because you have the setting room. So I'm going to delete this object. So now it's easier to play with it this way. Import. I'm going to select the, uh, the object again that's supposed to be my more. And now I'm going to put it as 10%. Obviously, it was too big at 100, so I'm going to put it as 10. And now when I come in here, you can see that that object is the exact size. You can see it's stacked right on top of the actual body of the other. It's a little easier. You still have to play with it, but it's a little easier to visualize it this way so that you can actually get the morph right when you import it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete that object again. All right. So now, now we know 10%. That's the target that we need. Uh, again, even I, I know it, I could try and export, when I export it, I could try and get the percentage right so that it comes out as 100%. Uh, so that it imports at 100%, but to me it's more important to get the right size on the export for the tooling uh, of the program you're going to use than it is just to be able to type 100% when you import it, if that makes sense. So I'd rather have to type 10% when I import it back in, just so it's easier to work with in Mudbox or Blender. So that's why... I make it so that the import is, whoops, that's why I make it when I when I go to import the, uh, the object or the, the morph that it's 10%. Alright, so I'm going to come over here, I'm going to go to file, figure, we've done this three separate times now, don't forget to select your figure, edit, figure, morph loader pro, gonna have to click show individual settings. I know that my morph needs to come in at 10%, not 100%. I'm gonna select my morph file. I'm gonna select the good morph that we created. I can rename it here, Spiky Lady. And I already deleted the other morph, so I, I don't need to worry about the updating. So it's just going to import it as a new more, and then I'm going to accept. It was loaded successfully because the meshes matched perfectly as far as geometry, not shape or anything. All right. Oh, you know what? Dang. One thing I did forget to explain. When you come over here and go to Morph Loader Pro, notice that the morph always comes in under Genesis 3 Female Morphs Morph Loader. Um, you can change that. So if you were to import this again, and you come over here, select your morph. All right. There is an option to specify. I mean, you can move this later also using the edit feature. But if you don't want to keep having to remove it, re remove or move it again. You can click on, uh, see, so right click on here and then select um, all the different options. Or you can click create. And basically, this is like a folder structure. It'll put it in the folder structure or the hierarchy over here based on whatever you select. So you could just select morphs instead of morphs, morph loader. And then I'll just put it in morphs. In fact, I'm going to do that now. So, let's see, now if I just go to Morphs, I see both Morphs, but only that one is in Morph Loader. The other one's actually in Morphs. So, um, keep that in mind. You can change the file structure of this. You can right-click on it and come over here and, let's see, if I remember right, I think Property Mover. Nope. 
If you right click up here, one of these selections allows you to move the actual property. Let me see where I figure it out real quick. All right, so I figured it out. If you right click on here and you go to set property group, uh, you can do the same thing here where you see it matches the different folders over here. You can kind of select where you want it to go. So if I want to move it into morphs instead of morph loader, hit accept. And now you see more the morph loader selection is gone because both of these are now in morphs. So you can move them around like that too. Um, you can even go in here and say set presentation and you can set an image in there uh, you can change the color of it let's see if I just change it to red color B change this one to blue I don't know what color name B be hit accept oh there you go it blends it so you can change the color of this uh, yeah so you can you can change the presentation you can select the limits, set out all the limits. So to get in all this, you just got to be in this edit mode. So I'm going to unselect this now because I've got my board. But now you can see now that we got the percentage right for the import, now the morph is working correctly. We got these weird, ugh, it looks like aliens and, uh, and coming out of their stomach. And this is another one that I did. That we did that have the right percentage also. So that's if you notice that your your morph is going up and down, it's probably because the percentage is not set right, and we've covered how to change that. Now, unfortunately, there is an issue with this process that I meant to mention prior, but it's something I'm sure you guys can figure out. Is <clears throat> right now when you attach. This. You go to Edit, Configure, Morph Loader Pro. I think it only attaches these morphs to the current object in the scene. If you were to make, let's say, a new Genesis female, I'm not so sure that that morph will be there. Um, Genesis 8 female. Put another one in here. Go to Parameters. Yep, I don't see morphs in here. Am I in the right thing? Yes. So notice that a new Genesis female does not have the morphs that we've included. The old one does. The one that's already in the scene has the morphs. But the original does not. Um, a newly imported character does not have the morphs. Now, this is something I'm sure I'll figure out, and you can probably leave it in the comments below on how to modify this. But uh, for now, I don't know what the solution is. You probably have to use that Morph Pro, or uh, but not on the figure, but just as a tool by some setting that permanently imports it, or you might have to. Um, Maybe you have to export this, edit and save it. Okay, go to file. All right, so I uh, was trying to quickly see if I could figure out how to permanently save this more. Um, <clears throat> someone recommended that if you click on it here and you go to file, uh, Save as, support asset, morph asset, and then you come down here and you find your morph. So your spiky lady. Um, you'd want to put your vendor name and product name, so the spiky lady. Then when you hit accept, it's like it's saving it in my library there accept they were saying that now they were saying that somehow that was supposed to save it permanently but I'm missing a piece or something because it 
haven't seen it before. Anyways, I'll leave it up to you guys to figure out how to actually save it permanently, but at least I showed you how to get it into the program, and you can create your own morphs, and as long as you save this scene, it's saved. And if I figure out how to save it permanently, so it applies it always to the, uh, to the figure, I might update it or comment in the video below. Anyways, I hope this helped maybe cover some of the issues you might have ran into trying to do this yourself. Um, so like I said, it doesn't require any specific tool. You can use any mesh editor that you wish, just as long as you don't modify the mesh itself. As long as it supports object wave files, which almost all mesh editors do, uh, you could go ahead and create yourself your